what is up to all my magical peeps out there i hope you guys are having a magical day and happy Samhain, happy halloween to whoever out there does celebrate now um i will say this one will be a christian trigger or christian triggering i don't know so <laughs> if you are christian and you get triggered easily please scroll on past this one this video is not for you, boo. However, if you are open-minded and, you know, like to discuss different topics, absolutely feel free to watch this video. So without further ado, we're talking about witches today and the overall history of witches and what that word really means. And I think it's crazy because a lot of us have a lot of preconceived notions as to what that word means, maybe because of Hollywood and all of these films that we've grown up with, where it depicts witches eating children and doing all of these horrible things and cursing everyone that they come across. But in reality, that is really not the case. And a witch is just like anyone else. Um, let's say a scientist or a teacher or anything like that, you have a spectrum of people on the good and the bad side and everything in between. So it is not one specific practice or one specific thing that all witches do. So let's just get that out of the way as well. And, you know, I believe that it's something that is very important and needs to be addressed, especially now in our modern day society where a lot of these spiritual practices that were seen as witchcraft are now proven science in our reality. Now, when we look at the word witch and where that word comes from, it is actually derived from the word Wicca. And the word Wicca, the root word of Wicca is wisdom or wise one. So with that being said, people that were considered to be witches, if we go back before the industrial complex, before the medical industry, before a lot of these modern industries took over every aspect of society that we live in, the witch was a, the shamans, the wise women, the midwives, you know, the people in the tribe that you would go to for help and assistance for a variety of different reasons. So for example, you know, these were the medicine women, the midwives, you know, the people that would ensure the success of the crops they would um, make rain, they would do the rain dances, they would offer spiritual guidance and even communicate with spirits and animals and just so much more that they would do in their community. Now, today, let's say <laughs> these women would be seen as just your modern everyday people as doctors, herbalists, botanists, you know, even just plain scientists or ecologists. I don't even really know how to say that one, but <laughs> you get the point. So there is really a very thin line between what is considered science and what is considered magic. And back then, I would say the line was, you know, even, even wider than it is now. And it's crazy because all of these things that are considered like a spiritual theory or witchcraft or whatever label you want to put on it is <laughs> seen as science only when we have the technology that allows us to actually perceive what is happening and to allow it to be explained within our five senses. Because a lot of what witches do are done in the you know metaphysical in the spiritual planes and a lot of that was not understood back then obviously so 
when we go back to the 1600s when the witch trials started you can see that there was a widespread slaughter of mainly women some men it was said to be about 80 percent women who were highly revered and respected in their community to become hunted down and slaughtered by the same people that would come to them for healings and what have you or for just herbal medicine and it is estimated that approximately 60,000 women were brutally slaughtered in this way just in Europe alone. Now that's not counting everywhere else in the world and that's not even counting what still goes on today in some countries and some third, third world countries where witches are still being killed. So if we take a look and go back to the beginning as to what happened, what caused these wise women, these shaman, these, these leaders and spiritual leaders of their community to become hunted down and to pretty much be outcasted in their society. So what we can see is the reformation of the Catholic and Protestant churches started in 1517. They pretty much made anyone that was suspected to be a witch public enemy number one. And the problem with that is even if you were just, you know, outside in your garden gathering herbs or if you were out in the forest, you know, just on a walk, any little thing like that could have, you know, caused anyone to accuse you of being a witch whether they could have proved it or not um, a lot of times they would just you know just take you without any other word being said and it's really sad that that actually happened so especially from spiritual people right and you know this was done i believe to convert as many people as possible to becoming you know to the church to you know for money, of course, and for overall for control over the population. So it's very interesting when you look to see, you know, the first book that was ever published by the printing press was the Gutenberg Bible. I believe that's how you say it. So the, the Gutenberg Bible was the first book ever printed and mass produced to the public. And shortly after that, the next book that was published was called the Malus Maleficarum, which roughly translates to the Hammer of the Witches. And that book was actually designed and detailed how you can hunt down witches and kill them. So with that being said, you can kind of see the propaganda pretty much started at that time. And it's very sad because, you know, they often would capture and torture these women and, you know, go around and find whoever they could that, you know, looked like they might be a witch and torture them into, you know, giving up who is the town witch, you know, do you know anyone who's a witch? All that type of stuff. And this actually created a deep wound within the psyche of women especially, and a deep sisterhood hood wound, which is known as the witch's wound. And I believe for that reason today in our society, that is why a lot of women have problems connecting deeper with other women and we often feel the need to compete with one another and you know that we really can't trust one another and i believe it all stems back from these witch trials where you know friends would sell out their other friends for fear of being killed or having their family killed or whatever the case was so i do believe that it is essential for us to know this information, to spread this information, 
in order for us to start to heal that deep wound that is embedded in our genetics at this point. So, so when we take all of this into consideration, I believe that it truly just all goes back to control. You know, if you can control a, the narrative, then you can essentially control the population. And the thing about witches is that they are not someone that can be controlled because they are sovereign in their own mind, body, and spirit. They are in tune with their own inner wisdom and they have the ability to see through the bullshit, so to speak. So, you know, they even helped others in their community have that sense of control over their own lives through rituals and sacred practices. So personally, when I think of the word witch, I think of someone who is embodies their own magic and is in tune with nature and the spiritual world. And really, even when you look at the word witch, it's almost like, which path should I take? A witch is someone who has the choice to create their own destiny. And I hope this video shed some insight into that. And let me know down below in the comments what the word witch means to you. And thank you so much for watching. I am wishing you all a very magical Samhain, Halloween, whatever it is you celebrate. May there be magic in your lives today, now, and forever. Bye!